morning. Today we are happy, happy, happy. No, hang on. <laughs> Went the wrong way. No, we're not happy. Hang on a minute, just and I'll make us happy. We should be happy now. There we are, happy. We're happy worshipping together as a community of Christ's people today because um, this is a celebration Sunday. And we have a sense of gratitude for what God is doing for us in the world and in the church. To sort of feel the kind of Holy Spirit is, is moving among us, that we've come out of the pandemic still strong with a renewed sense of energy and our prayer life is deepening and so today we in our special service we welcome our new social justice and community outreach worker Catherine <laughs> so we're, we're happy to, to, to have her here um, and we're going to receive three new people into membership of the church so this is a, a celebration so we bring together our musicians from all around our, our work and we have the community um, Union Chapel singers who are our community choir and we also have uh, three members of Union Chapel Voices, our gospel choir. So we're going to have a celebration service and it is, it is of course um, the Sunday before Lent which is another reason for having uh, a celebration because we're going to be miserable for the next seven weeks. <laughs> Not quite. Let us pray. Powerful, transforming spirit, we come with gratitude for the many blessings you bestow upon us day by day. We give you thanks for the people you have made us to be, for the grace by which you rescue us, for the life you breathe into us, for the desire you awaken in us. Descend upon us, Holy Spirit, lift up your church as your church lifts its hands in praise and worship. Strengthen, empower, restore, renew, so that our souls will magnify the Lord and give glory to God's holy name. Be with us, Holy Spirit, in this sacred hour as we seek fresh understanding from your word. We hold each other in love and care as you hold all of humanity and this precious planet in the palm of your hand. We pray in the name of the Prince of Peace for a world that is troubled by war. Holy God, holy and strong, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy and strong, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy and strong, holy and immortal, grant us peace. Morning has broken like the first morning.
So once again, welcome. Uh, I'm not going to delegate the welcome this week. So, welcome to Union Chapel Singers, welcome to Lydia Vita and Dean who are going to sing for us later, and to Rory who's playing bass, and Anthony of course on, on the, the keyboards. It's uh, lovely to see people here, uh, as I said, for this very special Sunday. We're going to have a reading now from the Book of Luke. Hi. Uh, today's, today's reading is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 9, verses 28 to 42. Thank you. <laughs> you don't need to go on tiptoes. Um, now, about eight days after these sayings, Jesus took with him Peter and John and James and went up on the mountain to pray. And while he was praying, the appearance of his face changed and his clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly they saw two men, Moses and Elijah, talking to him. They appeared in glory and were speaking of his departure, which he was about to accomplish at Jerusalem. Now Peter and his companions were weighed down with sleep, but since they had stayed awake, they saw his glory in the two men who stood with him. Just as they were leaving him, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah, not knowing what he said. While he was saying this, a cloud came and overshadowed them, and they were terrified as they entered the cloud. Then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my son, my chosen. Listen to him. When the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone. And they kept silent, and in those days told no one of any of the things they had seen. On the next day, when they had come down from the mountain, a great crowd met him. Just then a man from the crowd shouted, Teacher, I beg you to look at my son. He is my only child. Suddenly a spirit seizes him, and all at once he shrieks. It throws him into convolutions and teary foams at the mouth. It mauls him and will scarcely leave him. I begged your disciples to cast it out, but they could not. Jesus answered, You faithless and perverse generation, how much longer must I be with you and bear with you? Bring your son here. And while he was coming, the demon dashed him to the ground in convulsions. In convulsions, sorry. But Jesus rebuked the young clean spirit, healed the boy, and gave him back to his father. And all were, astounded, and all were astounded at the greatness of God. Let us imagine ourselves in Rio de Janeiro, or Port of Spain in Trinidad, or New Orleans, as the season of Epiphany comes to an end. People will be letting their hair down in carnival before the austerity of Lent. There's something transgressive about carnival. It's a time when people dance, sing, wear flamboyant clothes, costumes, and maybe do some things they won't be telling their grannies about when they get home. It's the feast before the fast. As carnival finishes and what we call Shrove Tuesday, Mardi Gras, people pile into church to confess their sins. And the following 40 days are devoted to fasting and to prayer. Carnival is taking a break from the routines of life. There are other ways, of course. Some of you may have read the writings of Thomas Merton, he was a contemplative monk who lived in a monastery and he believed that he would be able to set himself apart from the world and just live a holy life. However, after 15 years in the monastery, he had an extraordinary experience. He went out one day into the shopping district of Louisville, where he lived, just to do the chores for the monastery. 
And he later wrote, I was suddenly overwhelmed with the realization that I loved all these people, that they were mine and I theirs, that we could not be alien to one another, even though we are total strangers. He said that it was as if he had woken from a dream. The 15 years he had set apart from the world in the monastery suddenly seemed an illusion. He realized that you cannot separate yourself from the world. It was a relief and a joy, so much so that he almost laughed out loud. Looking at the faces of the people in the shopping district made him realize how wonderful it is to belong to the human race. If only we could all realize this. Merton wrote, there is no way of telling people that they are all, that they are all walking around shining like the sun. And this morning we read of Jesus shining like the sun. He was on a mountaintop with his closest disciples, Peter, James and John. We are told that he had gone there to pray. His prayer was deep and intense, so much so that he and his disciples were caught up in a vision of Moses and the prophet Elijah. And Jesus converses deeply with them. The representatives of the law and the prophets, Jesus' own ancestral faith. And the moment is so intense that the voice of God is heard. This is my son, my chosen. Listen to him. So now we know who Jesus is. He is chosen, the beloved son of a divine father. And we know what we are to do. We are to listen to him. Peter shared the same instinct which had led Thomas Merton into a monastery. It is a temptation to hold on to the highs of our spiritual life. Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He got it wrong. The proper response to these spiritual moments is to pause, to say silent, or as Merton discovered, just to repress the joy of your laughter. All of us can experience these moments of spiritual ecstasy, intensity. I imagine many of us will be able to describe moments in which God feels especially close, perhaps in church, perhaps outside in the country or a seashore or on a mountain top, or in conversation with someone. Moments which change the direction of our lives. These moments have been described as cracked doors or thin places between heaven and earth. Moments when we want to say, Master, it is good for us to be here. And these moments stay with us. They are guides and they are inspirations. But they cannot keep us from the call of the everyday challenges that we face. We meet, do we not, as we often do in dangerous times. The events this week in the Ukraine are very serious and will be weighing on our minds. Whilst we may feel more relaxed about the pandemic, it's still not over. And the extreme weather we have experienced recently emphasizes our concerns about climate change. The prevailing values of our society, conspicuous consumption, the corruption of our institutions, the stark polarization and fragmentation of our society run in direct contradiction to the gospel of Jesus Christ. These do not feel like mountaintop days. Harley has spent quite a lot of time thinking about images for our social media work. And he resists the stereotype pictures which so many churches use. Check them out, you know, lots of candles, flowers, lots of pictures of happy parishioners and friendly clergy. And this image frequently appears.
Religious websites, tracts, books, social media posts have people on mountains as the sun rises, their hands in ecstasy. Well, yes, it can be great on the mountaintop. You can feel exhilarated. But I have to say that I have stood on mountaintops covered in mist, feeling wet and very cold. We have to be honest sometimes about the transfiguration. It doesn't always last. The invitation to follow Jesus is to follow him on the heights and in the depths of life. In today's reading, we read of the relationship between God as Father and Jesus as God's chosen Son. We also hear of another Father and Son struggling in the valley below. The Father and Son are in a state of desperation. The boy has what sounds like a severe epileptic fit. The Father transparently loved his Son, his only child, very much. It's not difficult to imagine how distressing it must have been to see the boy in such pain and in constant danger for his life. Jesus' disciples had failed. Even though they had been invested with power from Jesus, they were unable to do anything to help the predicament. And after Jesus had healed the boy, the Gospel says he gave him back to his father. The healing was more than physical. Father was now able to be a father, to do all that was needed for him. And for a Jewish father, the most important duty was to teach his boy the Torah. His duty was to tell of Moses and the prophets. A body had been healed, a relationship restored, father and son together again. Transfiguration Sunday is the hinge between the bright season of Epiphany and the purple season of Lent. We're being called to move into a period of prayer and fasting. And perhaps we can also think of it as the hinge between the high and low moments of our spiritual life. And we see this graphically in the Gospel story. For there is a beloved son on the mountain and a beloved son in the valley. The church, as every church, should, this church, as every church, should be a crack door, a space where together we can come close to God, where we are to be a place of prayer and a conduit through which the grace of the gospel message can shine through. And then we need to remember that the God we encounter in prayer and contemplation is the same God who is with us in the valley, struggling with the brokenness of our time, praying for peace, in a world at war, offering healing in a broken society, reconciling differences between peoples. And we remember that our call is to listen to Jesus, the one who heals even when we, his disciples, fail. For the shining face of Jesus is the shining face of humanity, intimately bound to the divine. And let us, like Thomas Merton, awaken ourselves to the truth, that we are all walking around, shining like the sun. Amen. We're going to be led in singing now. Shine, Jesus, shine. It's Carnival Sunday. You can do what you like in this. You can stand, you can move. Enjoy yourself.
very special moment now. We, um, in our church, we very much value the community in which we're set, and we very much value the prophetic mission ministry of the church in the world in which we are set. We are deeply concerned about economic injustice, the interrelationship between people who have and people who simply don't have enough. And each week we have our margins project here that uh, helps and supports people who live very precarious lives economically. We're very much concerned about racial justice, about climate justice, and engage ourselves uh, in activities which are intended to support the world, but also through our prayer, through our building up of a community here, we are seeking to express God's love in the whole of the world in which we, we live. And to help us do that, we have host, a worker, uh, now Catherine, previously Daisy Am, uh, to help us organize events and activities uh, that we do that. And so Catherine came and spoke to the church a little while ago and she told us a little bit about herself. So I thought maybe today she'd sort of do part two and talk about her diary, talk about the things that she does day by day, week by week, and the things that she's going to be doing in her role as um, our social justice and community outreach worker. So, Catherine, give her a welcome. <laughs> that applause nicely filled the gap while you walked up. <clears throat> Hello, everybody. Hello. It's lovely to see so many people here this morning. Yes, as Vaughan said, we really care about our place in the community and social justice. So when I started this role about two months ago now, the first things I was doing was meeting lots of different people in the community, finding out what's happening and particularly what we're doing as a church to see how best we can support the people around us. One thing we did was become a safe haven, which it's basically what we were doing already, being a place where people who are in need can come to us and find support. It's just now we have a lovely blue sign on the gate to show anyone coming past we are a place that is there for them. Also been supporting the work of Margins and going, I went down there for Manuel who is amazing and helped one morning. And we're looking at what we can do to extend the work of margins to set up an Eritrean drop-in for our friends at the Eritrean church. And that's something we're really excited to get started up. <laughs> so margins is our drop-in for people with living in precarious lives where they can find support, they can find food, laundry, showers, whatever they need, we're here to support them. Another drop-in service that we're going to be starting up again is the LGBTQ drop-in with the wonderful organisation Forum Plus. And that's going to be an evening thing with different organisations that support the LGBTQ community coming and sharing what they're doing so people can find information. And really excitingly hoping to set up an LGBT theology group and that's something we'll be looking at in the coming weeks. But if you're interested in that, do come and talk to us and we can see what form we want that to take. The next project we're going to be starting up is going to be a community gardening project, which will be in our courtyard out here. And we've got MG on board, who fortunately knows a lot about gardening, because I don't. And we're going to be working with him to set up a garden, also connecting with a local um, community plant nursery, who offer um, free plants to groups growing food so we can think about sustainability and our role in the food chain and in climate change. And that theme of climate justice is one I'm really excited about. And look out for September where we're going to be launching a whole new programme around climate justice and sustainability, which we'll be launching with a green fair for local sustainability groups in September. 
So that's something really exciting. And then we're also going to be looking ahead to Black History Month and our programming around that. So lots of great things we're going to be doing. And of course, the next thing we're going to be doing is our Lent program, but we're going to tell you more about that a bit later on in the service. So that's what we're doing so far. Please do get in touch with me if any of that is something you're really passionate about or you just want to find out more. It's great to all work together on social justice and working with our local community. And thank you for all your support so far. Just like to offer a short prayer, let us pray. Powerful God, bestow your blessing on Catherine as she commences her work here at Union Chapel. Pour down your Holy Spirit on her and upon this community of believers gathered here. May her ministry in this place be a source of joy, hope and peace to all who she encounters. And through her work and the witness of this church, may God's kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. Catherine, on behalf of the church, I warmly welcome you into our fellowship. Thank you all for always being so welcoming to me. You are a wonderful community. Thank you. And now we've got even more things happening. We're going to receive three people into membership. Uh, Leon, who already read the lesson. Peter, there he is, waving to you, and Sue. It's absolutely wonderful to see Sue here. Sue uh, hasn't been for, oh, quite a long time, but she's a very regular uh, member of our Bible study group. And we've discovered in the pandemic that we can have people into membership, bring people into membership who can't, easily come to church on a Sunday though great that Sue has managed to do that this morning but we can draw people in also via our social media uh, contacts and our, our networks but I'm going to come down and we're going to do that a little bit down down here Peter would you, would you come here as well that's great Stand. You can stand. Surround Sue. This morning we received three people into a membership of the church. Leon, Sue and Peter have found nurture and support in this particular church. And through the prompting of the Holy Spirit, they affirm in our presence their covenantal relationship with Christ and the members of this church. So I ask the three of you. Do you promise, by the grace of God, to be Christ's disciples, to follow in the way of our Saviour, to show love and justice, and to witness to the work and word of Jesus Christ as best you are able? Do you promise, according to the grace given you, to grow in the Christian faith and to be a faithful member of the Church of Jesus Christ, celebrating Christ's presence in all the world? Do you promise to participate in the life and mission of this family of God's people in its prayer and worship of God as it serves in this community and the world? And do you promise to support them as members of this church, our brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ? So we welcome you in the common life of this church. We promise you our friendship and prayers as we share the hopes and labours of the Church of Jesus Christ. By the power of the Holy Spirit, may we continue to grow together in God's knowledge and love and be witnesses of our risen Saviour. And in the name of Jesus Christ and on behalf of Union Chapel, we extend to you the hand of Christian love, welcoming you into the com company of the Church. Leon. Welcome, my brother. See you. Thank you, too.
the, the tradition of our church is to offer the right hand of fellowship, and I think that is so much like the peace. So we'll offer each other the peace. Now, we, we don't do this because of all this COVID stuff. So what we do is share the peace with sign language, which is just like this. Just go like this. So we offer one another a sign of peace, or the gaze of peace now. Isn't it? It's lovely, but you do look a bit daft from here. <laughs> We're going to have this little light of mine. Graham White, Deacon Emeritus, to lead us in intercessions. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Good. Um, let us pray for the church and for the world. We think of this world that we live in composed as it is of shadow and light. We think of this glorious morning with the sun shining and everything looking new and fresh and clean. But we think also of all the people in the world who have woken up to a less inspiring morning. For the people who have been displaced by the weather crisis, who have no homes anymore. We think of the people who are not able to work, or who live an insecure existence, so that regardless of the weather, they have not much to rejoice for. We think of the people who are 
ill, who are suffering from COVID and other diseases. We think not just of COVID in this country, where this threat seems to be receding, but of COVID in Africa and Asia and the parts of the world where disease is much more of a threat than it is here. We think of all of this. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayer. We think also of ourselves in the, in the community that we live in. We think of our jobs, our work, our families. We think of our neighbours. We think of the people we come across as we go around our business. The people we see quite frequently but do not know. The people in our streets who come from other places in the world. People whose cultures or aspirations or problems we do not understand. We pray for all of these people, all the people we come into contact with, whether we know them or not. We pray for the church. We pray for a church which is full of glory and suffering, which does magnificent things, but which is also persecuted and despised. We think of our church, our church that in an affluent part of the world, full of educated and fairly contented people. And we think of churches elsewhere, churches which face persecution, churches which have to live underground, churches which are not happy with the societies that they live in. Churches also which are full of anger and turmoil and schisms. Lord, for this church in all of its features, in all of the ways it can exist, we pray for that, we pr and we also rejoice because of, because of what the church is doing. We look and we think of the, f and we pray that the future of the church may be one in which the church's glory is revealed, one in which the church has more to say for the wor to the world, and, oh, and one in which the world accepts the church more than it does now. We think of our lives, our lives and all of the different things that we do, all of the different people we come into contact with, of our jobs, of our families, of what the children among us do, how they are educated, what people they come into contact with. And we think also of people who are retired and older and looking towards the twilight of their years. We ask for all of these people that we may know better and more surely what our calling is and that we have, may have the courage and the, and, and, and the ability to live out our calling. We think also of the church as it wrestles with what you have to tell it. We think of that mysterious and challenging book, the Bible, of our engagement with it, 
that we may, in all of our struggles, be in touch with your word in the Bible and that we may learn to listen, that we may listen to what you are telling us and that we may go on to do what you tell us, hopefully and joyfully and energetically. All these things we lift up to you now. All of these things, whether we are happy with them or not, we lift them up to you. All of these things, all of these things which we pray for and are aware of praying for, all of these things which we have in the deep recesses of our heart and are not aware of. We lift up ourselves and our joys and our sorrows, our wishes, our desires, our fears. We think of what your Son did for us and we bring them up to you praying and knowing that you will take all of this and will bless us, will lead us into a life that is joyous and fulfilled and courageous. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Um, all of these we pray for in your name and for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. So we uh, move from Epiphany into Lent, and this year Lent is a very special opportunity in our church. We're going to concentrate on our theme. I'm going to ask my colleagues here, Harley and uh, Catherine, to help me here. And I'm going to ask my two lovely assistants to move among you with a little present. Our theme for Lent, uh, as you probably know by now, is the beloved community. It's a phrase that was used by Dr. Martin Luther King on a number of occasions. And beginning this Wednesday and going through to our Easter celebrations, that is the theme that we will ex be exploring. Um, every Sunday, uh, we will have special music in our service. And every Sunday, we will have uh, a theme based on a, a sermon by Dr. Martin Luther King. And then every Tuesday evening, we our usual Bible study will be a special study course on the beloved community. And in the booklet that you're receiving now, uh, there is some information about the study course and some background material for you. Um, and then uh, every Wednesday evening, we're going to have our open space evenings. This is an innovation which Catherine is now going to tell you all about. So the Wednesdays are going to be some really good opportunities to explore the theme beloved community in relation to different aspects of our lives. It's going to start off on Ash Wednesday with an introduction to Martin Luther King's vision of the beloved community and that's with Richard Reddy. So please do try to come along to that one as it's really going to set the theme for the rest of the series. And then we're going to move on to explore issues such as our creation, and that's the role of creation in the beloved community, LGBTQ plus in the beloved community, and women in the beloved community. But we've also got a really exciting evening on the 23rd of March called Meet Your Neighbours, as we think about how our community in the church is part of the wider community around us. We've invited lots of people from local faith communities, identity groups, activist communities, 
and even our neighbours next door to us here at the church. We'd love to have lots of you there on that evening as we welcome them and we play host to our community. We're also going to have some music there by local performers, some poets, and a free meal provided by Margins. We do ask that you sign up for all these events. They are free, but it helps us to know numbers if you sign up in advance. And I hope that we will see you there to explore some of these topics in a relaxed evening with great speakers and good entertainment. So it'd be lovely to see you there. It's my turn. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to play it seriously this time. I'm going to try. So this, and it's also, I think, the best event that we've got on the Saturday, the 26th of March. We have a very, very special screening of King, a filmed record, Montgomery to Memphis. It's a film by Sidney Lumet, you know, great director, and I believe produced by Joseph Mankiewicz, right? Joseph L. Mankiewicz, yeah. Made in the 1970s, but rarely shown. Um, it's going to, well, basically, it charts the entire journey of King's, um, King's, Martin Luther King's work from Montgomery, from the bus boycotts into Memphis, where, of course, um, we know what happens to him. So I think that's going to be really, really, really unique um, and beautiful, beautiful event. And then also on the 15th of April, we have Beloved, which is an evening of gospel music and poetry. Um, we're inviting our gospel choir, of whom uh, we have a few, few members here today, uh, uh, right here, here, and right, here and there in the pews. Um, also going to be a really beautiful evening. Uh, I think we're going to feel the spirit moving now, so I'll, uh, I'll leave it there. Thank you. I invite Union Chapel singers back onto the stage because the season of Epiphany is coming to a close and the season of Lent is about to begin. And I hope very much that this will be a very special season for us and a one that you will all join in. I hope to see you on Wednesday evening, particularly uh, when Richard Reddy is going to be talking to us. And Ogo Ajala is going to be singing as well. So each evening we'll have music and, po and meditation as well as a talk. But... My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God, my Saviour. Magnificat, magnificat, magnificat anima meum domino. God, we pray that as we enter into the holy season of Lent, you will open our hearts, minds, and wills, 
to receive fresh insight from your gospel. We pray that we will receive the blessings which come from the cracked door between heaven and earth, and that our inward reflections will help us reach out to our neighbours. May the power of your Holy Spirit strengthen us in love, enrich us with your grace, and grant us the courage to be your disciples in the world. And we sing, O oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wind die. Creator, the Son, our Redeemer, and the Holy Spirit, our Liberator. 
be with us all this week and forevermore. Amen.